Hello everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's Lake Software webinar where we're going to be discussing the latest updates to our CalPuff View software. Now at Lakes, we of course provide a variety of applications and support and training on those. Um, our software includes the popular AirMod View, CalPuff View, IRAP H View, and more. We also have a whole suite of IT solutions, larger package products like our Aquamist Cloud that incorporates emissions calculations, modeling, forecasting, uh, reporting, compliance, and a whole suite of tools built into that. And then our training opportunities, which you can uh, go to our website to learn more about. Now let's get right to it. Of course, CalPuff View version 9.0 was released um, within the last few weeks. And we wanted to give an opportunity for you guys to listen to what some of the new features are um, and get a feel for that. So the biggest change within CalPuff View version 9 is the inclusion of our new version 7 beta executables. These are the executables that are published by the CalPuff modeling system team. So we have incorporated these new beta executables into the program for use. And one of the main features of these new executables is a new source type within the model for agricultural spraying. We'll talk more about that in this presentation. Another change uh, and feature within the CalPuff View version 9 is the su new support for shapefile land use data files. Um, so previously there were ways to incorporate a, a variety of land use data products and we've now added shapefile capabilities um, to that suite. There's some additional features that we'll go over as well including a lot of improvements to observational data uh, processing for meteorological data, some enhancements to CalPost, and some additional updates. Now these new version 7 beta models, as I said they were just released earlier this year, they're available for download from the CalPuff Modeling System website. If you haven't been there, it is www.src.com. And on that site, which is hosted by um, Exponent, they publish all of the codes and all of the executables for the various CalPuff modeling systems, including the EPA approved, the old version 6, the current version 7, and then this new beta version 7.3. The new models introduce the new agricultural spray source meant to look at deposition and dispersion of re pesticide releases specifically um, from aerial spraying activities. There's also a number of uh, specific bugs from the prior version 7 that were corrected and updated in this release. And importantly, the addition of a new CalPuff version 7 user guide addendum. This is a very important bit of documentation that does a really good job of describing some of the new source type features um, within both version 7 and the new 7, version 7.3. Um, that includes the road source, this new agricultural spray source, and one of the flare source options. And then a couple other new model options are also well described within that. So it provides a good basis of information if you're interested. This new agricultural spray source is pretty interesting. So it links the USDA Forest Service um, pesticide deposition model called AgDisp to CalBuff. AgDisp is used to calculate droplet dispersion, deposition, and evaporation of pesticide releases from um, aerial spraying activities over large fields. So with this connection, AgDisp is now capable of producing an external file with time varying droplet sizes and positions and it just acts as any other external source file that you would input to CalPuff. So just as you can have um, an external file with uh, time varying emissions for other source types, points, areas, volumes, etc., now you'll be able to supply this external source file for spraying activities pass that to CalPuff, and then CalPuff is capable of calculating transport, dispersion, and deposition um, into the long-range field as well. So the file is passed to CalPuff. It's just your regular old external source file. And then CalPuff internally disperses these sources as rods. If you're familiar with the way CalPuff disperses, there's puffs, but then there's also a slug routine where it kind of elongates puffs out to give a more complete dispersion look in the near field. Um, 
here's what the rod then looks like, um, as opposed to a slug, which has a small initial position that expands out, the rod is continuous all the way across. And if the wind direction changes, the entire rod moves uniformly. The road source that is integrated into CalPuff also disperses in this manner. And then you can have multiple lines to represent uh, the aerial spraying activities as the plane moves back and forth over the different parts of the field.